Hello, and welcome to the third and final episode of Project Bluebird. As promised, in this episode you'll see me create the rest of the parts for Bluebird, and finally get it into paint. This project has taken a lot longer than I originally planned, and that's for a few good reasons. Scratch-built projects take a lot of time, because each individual part has to be designed and created from raw materials. Researching the subject takes time, and sometimes educated guesses have to be made to fill in the gaps. Frequently errors are discovered as fresh information comes to light. Often this means parts have to be reworked or even remade. Sometimes it's just a case of how on earth am I going to make that? Fortunately 3D printing helps a lot these days, but traditional techniques and skills are also invaluable. In this project all of these issues have reared their ugly head but ultimately, it's all been worthwhile. I learned a lot from the T80 project, and Bluebird is the next step on my scratch building journey. I have many more projects planned, so make sure you subscribe to my channel to see my next project. I can tell you it's a lot bigger than anything I've ever built before, and is already 3D printed. There should be a video out on May the 4th. Anyway, let's get back to Bluebird. In the last episode, after a bit of a nightmare, I finally managed to get the main body parts assembled and attach the wheels. Checking against photos made me feel a lot happier about the overall shape of the model, and this was a massive relief. Now I had the basic form of Bluebird in the right ballpark, it was time to make some progress on the detailed areas. I began by designing the cockpit in my CAD software. Fortunately, I found a few good photos of the interior online, and felt reasonably confident I could recreate Campbell's office. With the parts designed, I imported them into my slicer software for 3D printing on my Ultimaker in ABS. I also produced some of the smaller, finer parts on my photocentric resin printer. This was much better for the fine detailed parts, where my Ultimaker was better suited to the larger, simpler parts. As ever, the resin parts came out well, and just needed removing from the supports before gentle cleaning up with small files. In the meantime, guess what? I found a new book on land speed cars. Apparently, this is one of the most respected books on the subject, and I can see why. It has a lot of information and some very well reproduced photos of the cars back in the day. It also has some very good colour profiles, not only of the record breaking cars, but also some of the honourable mentions as well. It certainly helps clarify the story of these incredible vehicles. Right, back to Bluebird. I've now attached the extended 3D printed engine intake and blended it into the bodywork. I've also drilled out the recesses for the 3D printed resin exhausts. This took hours to do, carefully marking out the bodywork and then cutting out the holes bit by bit without straying over the marked lines. After cleaning up all the cockpit parts, this is what I've got. The floor has most of the parts, with the side walls taking minor details. The side walls will be glued into the main bodywork, and the details added separately. And here's the floor unit mocked up. You can clearly see the end of the gearbox and the prop shaft housing leading to the rear wheels. To make the windscreen, I use a different form of CAD. This time, cardboard aided design. After a few attempts, I found a profile I was happy with and used it to cut out the windscreen in some scrap 0.5mm nickel silver sheet. I soldered on four locating pegs and carefully cut out the holes for the glazing. I could have done this in plastic hard, but given the amount of handling and its vulnerability, I decided metal was the way to go. With the frame cut and folded, it was time to test fit it to the bodywork of Bluebird. Of course, I then found a decent photograph of the windscreen which showed the rake to be steeper, so I had to remake it. That was another couple of hours delaying the project, but had I settled for the Mark I version, I would never have been happy with the finished model. There are some things that you just have to get right, as they affect the overall character of the subject. 
Now to address the main bodywork. To smooth out the lines of the 3D printing and strengthen the body shell, I used a material called XTC3D. It worked really well on the T80, so I mixed up a batch and brushed it onto Bluebird. I thought it went on pretty well at the time, but when I came back to it the following day, I knew something wasn't right. In some areas it hadn't fully cured and was still soft. I tried giving it time and warmth to cure the epoxy coating, but with little success. This was a disaster. I had no idea how much of the epoxy was good or bad, and it would be a nightmare to strip the entire body shell. After days of filing, sanding and filling, I managed to eliminate all the soft areas, and also reprofiled the front end again. Now I could start on the fine detail of the bodywork. I began by cutting out the radiator intake in the nose, and then marked out the panel lines before carefully scribing them in. Fortunately, the photos I took at Goodwood were really useful, and helped me draw in the panel lines with a fine marker, and position all of the fasteners for the bodywork. The fasteners were drilled out by hand, and created by inserting 0.8mm brass rods, which were then filed down so they were just proud of the surface. In total, I recreated 216 fasteners. I think they were well worth the effort, adding a lot of detail and credibility to the model. I also added some 3D printed front suspension detail, and bent up some small standoffs, which I added to the underside just in board of the wheels. These will keep the body off the desk while it's being sprayed. To give the model some weight, I bolted the wheels together and filed a flat across the set of six tyres. These flats were then blended in to avoid any hard edges. Now I had all the parts finished and ready for paint. And here they are, all 55 of them. That's a lot more than I thought when I started the project. It's a real milestone getting to this stage. Hopefully, it should be plain sailing from now on. I thought I'd assemble the parts one last time, just to finally check I was happy with everything. I think it looks pretty good. Now I can break it down and give it a coat of primer. My go-to primer for this stage is a filler primer, which should fill any of the minor scratches in the bodywork. This goes on really well, and once dry can be easily sanded back and re-coated if necessary. I sprayed the underside first, before flipping it over onto the small standoffs and then spraying the upper surface. I love this stage, because you can instantly see the sculptural shape of the model as it becomes one colour for the first time, even though it is mustard yellow. While the body was drying, I gave all the other parts a coat of grey primer. I used double-sided tape to temporarily fix them onto some heavy card, to make spraying easier. On examining the now dried bodywork, I not only noticed some small scratches, which needed filling, but some strange areas of cracking. These were more areas of uncured epoxy, which had reacted with the primer and had to be removed back down to the 3D print before being refilled and sanded back down. This took a couple of days to rectify, as new areas showed up several times, where I'd previously thought there were no problems. I knew that I'd mixed up the epoxy correctly. The only thing that I could think of was that I hadn't shaken up the Part B bottle enough prior to measuring it out. I'll have to remember that for next time. With the bodywork now finally fixed, I gave it a coat of grey primer, so that I was spraying the top coat over the same base colour across the model.
Now for the part of any build I dislike the most, painting, where hopes and dreams are made and lost. The blue was sprayed using my old Pash airbrush, which is great for spraying large areas and got the job done quickly and efficiently. Once dialed in, the colour went on well, without any runs or blemishes. I spent hours working out and mixing the correct colour, which is very specific to the Bluebird cars. It's a sort of greyish mid-blue. It was hard to judge the colour, as in many photos the blue does look quite dark, so finding a good baseline to go by was difficult. To allow for scale effect, I find it best to always go lighter. The final colour, I think, is a very close match, and I think translates well to the black and white images of Bluebird. I now have a big jar of this blue, and I don't want it to go to waste, so I'll have to think of something to do with it. Don't worry, I do have a plan, but that's for another day. Part of Bluebird I always saw as a potential problem was the wheels. These were highly polished on the real car, and I know how hard it is to get a good chrome finish. Fortunately, there is a product, made by Molotow, which solves this problem. It's normally sold as a paint pen, but if you buy the refill, you can put it through your airbrush, without any thinning. It sprays well, and gives an incredible finish, becoming mirror chrome before your eyes. It's just amazing to see. The only downside is that it's a bit of a pig to clean out of the airbrush. You just have to be careful and thorough. I now had all of the parts painted and ready for assembly. But there was still one small but crucial area to tackle, the dashboard. I'd already 3D printed and painted this, but wanted to add the faces to the gauges. Based on photos, I designed these in Coral Draw. To give you an idea of size, the sides of the dark pink square are 1mm. I also designed the markings for the rest of Bluebird, and printed them out on my inkjet printer. The markings on the left-hand sheet are on white decal paper, and need to be cut out exactly. These will give a background to the markings on the right sheet, which are on clear decal paper. You can find out more about printing your own decals in my how-to series. Just click on the link at the top of the screen. The decals for the instruments went on well, and were sealed with a layer of Micro Crystal Clear, giving a nice gloss finish recreating the glass of the gauges. The 3D printed steering wheel fits neatly into the dashboard. Its boss was painted with a Molotow Chrome marker. The windscreen frame was painted separately. Panels of clear plastic card were cut to shape and glued into place with Micro Crystal Clear. Malcolm Campbell had everything on Bluebird painted or finished in the same blue, even the seat. It creates a challenge trying to give interest to the interior, but using washes and different varnishes does give some variety. The cockpit is inserted through the floor of Bluebird, and fits securely into place, without any glue. Initially I just gave the body a coat of Johnson's Clear, but this only gave a satin finish, and I felt Bluebird needed the full gloss treatment. I chose to go for Alclad Aqua Gloss, and applied it with a flat brush in the direction of the airflow. It is very thin and gives an excellent finish, which I think reflects the character of Bluebird well. With the windscreen and markings now in place, and a final coat of varnish, let's have a look at the finished model. I knew it was going to be a challenge making a model that didn't look like a toy, but I think I've pulled it off. I hope so. Adding the detail really makes a big difference. Let me know what you think in the comments. I've tried to recreate Bluebird as it ran at Bonneville in 1935, setting Campbell's last speed record. This is different to how she appears today. It's been quite a ride recreating this iconic land speed car. I'm so pleased I took the project on, and made it through the various disasters I had along the way. I've learned a lot on this build, and feel confident about tackling another of these land speed record holders in the future. There are some great subjects out there, 
The problem is choosing which one. If you have any favourites, let me know in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed Project Bluebird. If you have, hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So you catch my next video when it goes live, click on the bell icon. As you can see from my channel, I always have lots of projects going on, which I hope you'll find interesting. These range from my staples and vine models featured in Sarah's vlog, to short projects like this and the T80. If you have any questions about Project Bluebird, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.